So Rolex came out with some new releases, even a new model. Uh, let's start talking about what was finally arrived. What do you guys think about the Daytona? Can we move, Dan? The Daytona? Daytona. I'll be getting with it. The real flow. Okay, so Rolex came out with a new reference Daytona. How long has it been since they came out with a new movement in Daytona? Oh, I don't, I'm not entirely sure on it that. It has a new movement? It has a new movement. Yeah. It's been... You know when the last time they came out with the movement was? No. 2000, right? The Zenith? When they went to the in-house... Oh, I understand the question. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, Rolex yeah, yeah. went from the... I believe it was the 90s. They had a, a altered Zenith El Primero movement. Mm -hmm. And then from there, they went to the... They went to the in-house, I believe it was a 4030 movement. Mm -hmm. And now we got a new 4131 that has a updated 72 power hour reserve. So all the Rolex have had, finally, the GMT's got the new uh, movement with the, you know, where it says Swiss and then has a crown made. The new one, two references. Mm -hmm. Now we got... Explain to the camera, Bobby. Yeah. I'm talking to you guys. Yeah, they oh, okay. see me. They, they see it on the screen. Yeah, okay. yeah. So now... With this uh, updated movement on the Daytona, now we get finally a 72-hour power reserve. Um, just like the GMTs, the Submariners, everything that you see, the crown, or you see Swiss crown, the Rolex Coronet, and then made, that little Daytona finally got it. So if you guys look here on the screen, you're going to see that the Platinum Daytona, did you notice what they did to the bezel? Yeah, somebody actually pointed that out to me, a friend of mine, because he was like, they, he, he, he did not like... The changes to the bezel. He didn't like. And the at first, when I looked on the Rolex website, I was like, "What changes?" Like I couldn't figure you out what the, the metal, the difference is. The yeah. So around. essentially, it, it seems like the ceramic is now an insert as opposed to being the whole entire bezel. Correct. Right. And I didn't realize that at first. And which I think it will be more protected having insert inside the. Of course, it, it makes sense that that they did that for protection. That's what mm -hmm. I was thinking there. You can see here a side by side comparison of the Daytona's. Uh, the previous model on the left and then the new model on the right you can see now the bezel went from just being a raw ceramic bezel to a bezel insert mm -hmm. and similar then, to the yacht master the way the, the yacht masters on the straps are there's a ceramic insert yes and just like even the subs and the, the gmt the subs and the GMTs. I, I also see the crown guards are bigger the crown guards yeah so crown guards covers more of the crown i do notice that yes yeah. that's crown a very good are bigger mm -hmm. so the lugs did, are wider they did redesign the case slightly on this, uh, so we get a new movement. We get smaller hour markers. We get a bezel now around the ceramic insert, and that and looks we like got we, a clear case back. That's a clear case back. Let's pop that up on the screen. That's clear very very back. important. Uh, that, I think that's the first one. So look at this here. Very nice. It's a first Rolex. I, I believe well, so. I don't know if there's any others. Yes, the Cellini lines and, and oh, that's but it's right. the first of the perpetual line, the Oyster perpetual lines of watches, sports watches with the clear case back. That is correct. What do you? How do you feel about the clear case back? I feel like everybody now is gonna create a custom clear case back and pop it in all the models just to have it. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, I have to give you the both options. I give you the clear case back and I give you <laughs> watch they come out with that too. I but, mean, I, you know, you know, okay. I, I like the clear case back, but to me, you know, I, you know, when you wear the watch, you can't see the back of it. So it's not a deal breaker for me, you know, the clear case back. I agree too. What do you feel about it? So I personally like the fact that they're displaying the movements now. You know, like a lot of the other luxury brands, they, they offer that. that. Yeah, they offer it. And typically, like when people start getting into watches, it's because they like the mechanics of the watches. That's they like the movements. Important. They want to see how things work. You know, you pay for more complicated movements, so it's nice to be able to actually see, see the Rolex movement the now. Quality yeah, especially the on yeah. the Daytona. The That's Daytona, yeah. one of the more complicated you, movements they make. Do you think that that was one of the best uh, watches they could have <clears> done it on, or would you have liked to see it on a different model? For example, like a GMT or a, even a Sky Dweller. Sky Dweller. A Sky Dweller. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's an too. annual calendar. It's, I mean, they need if to do they it. They would have reworked the movement. Now we could check for fakes without removing the back case. That's true. <laughs> that too, you know look right I mean? at the movement. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. They'll probably start did, adding to, you know, the models. I don't know. I said go. I did you see? Go go back to the to the page. Did you guys see the the meme of the panda now? How people are making fun of the panda Daytona? I was seeing this the other day. Yeah, that is really funny. <laughs> so it said that the panda pretty much had like lost its black shadow. If you notice here on the sub dials, 
they went and they made the rings a little bit smaller mm -hmm. as well. Do you like the updated Panda or do you, or the new metal, 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 metal? New, new ones on the right? Yeah, the new ones on the right. Slimmer, slimmer sub dials. I don't know. I, uh, it has to grow on me. I like the, I like the previous model how it looks. I do too. The face and the dot and the, uh, I do too. I think that roll is got it right the first time on it's that It's really, one. it's really hard to know until we see the watch. Until you see the watch. Because we're looking at mock-ups. I mean, typically when they release new watches and I see the photos, I'm like, nah, I'm not really sure. And then I see the watch and I'm just like, Rolex it's amazing. Is a, you yeah. say it all the time. Rolex doesn't make ugly watches. Yeah. They don't make ugly watches. So right off of the photos and also because we're used to seeing them one way, it, lo it looks weird. It does. It, it does look weird. a little strange. It does look. A Do you think that the price is going to increase now of the original Panda, or is it going to go down and the people are going to want the new model? That depends on the on how well the new one sells. If nobody likes the new one, everybody's going to be wanting the old one. You know what? That's not going to happen. Yeah. You know, I. You know, the minute that people said discontinue, a new model came out, then everybody's dying. I want to have that piece. I don't know how many phone calls I got yesterday. People asking me for watches that I didn't even haven't seen yet. It just came out. I'm gonna oh, have yeah. it. Oh yeah, Charlie, can you can you give me a call for this piece already? Give me the Yamaha. Yeah, I'm not having even seen that watch. You yeah. Know? So I think how long do you think it's gonna be till we start seeing these watches pop up and people are, well, start selling them in, in I gray think market? This year is gonna be faster than any other year. Couple weeks. You see a lot three of weeks, four weeks. you see a lot of merchandise from Rolex going around. So supposedly a lot of people getting that phone call from the AD. So I I'm, I'm sure that I'm gonna see it pretty fast. Within yeah, I think within the month, honestly. Within a month, yeah. Usually it takes like two months for us to start seeing them, but... You know, do I want to buy any of them now? at the beginning? Me personally, I'm not a fan of buying a watch when it first come out because that, you know, that fever, I want to have it first, the, then you can pay the, a lot for the that. Sprite. The tax, the tax to get it first. But yeah. also, yeah, exactly. Look at the Sprite. When the Sprite came out, it was 50000 That was Now it's at what, $23,000. Yeah, exactly. $24,000 now. Some, somewhere around yeah. there. Do you think the with with the new releases? Well, you were saying that they were gonna come out faster. Did you see the Rolex actually making three factories now to keep up with their production demands? I didn't hear about that. Yeah, Eric. That's pretty Eric amazing. Eric sent me a, what, our, our client Eric sent me the the video on that. So Rolex came up now. They have more manufacturing. Three manufacturing plants mm -hmm. to keep up with their production. So we might. That's see what they did. You know, that's that's what I. It feels like they flooded the market with. With the product, that's why there's so many Rolex going around, and that's why the price has dropped because you see the variety of watches available. So I think that steel is still holding better than than gold and two tone, though, right? Ste like stainless, 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 yeah, stainless, stainless, yeah, stainless, especially always, for sport models, always. Stainless, it's yeah. always been like that, right? Always. Very nice. What's what's the next piece that we have up there, Dan? So, oh, did you guys see this? I did. What do you think about this? I don't like it. You don't like it? All right, so I like the dial. It's cool. I, it looks like there's ruby markers, which I think is really cool. But I don't like the date wheels. Did like, for me personally, I don't like you it. You have a day date with no day or no date. Correct. And it would have been maybe cool with like... And you said a 36? Yeah. Yeah, it's 36 millimeter, but there's no day. There's no date. There's emojis where the, where the day should be. And, and I'm sorry, where the date should be, and then where the day is, it's like it positive says, affirmations. It or says just happy, like nice eternity, words. gratitude, right, peace, exactly. faith, and love, and hope. It's probably made for kids. Maybe made for kids. Maybe I, to your 15-year-old daughter. When for Jay-Z's kids, maybe. I don't know Jay -Z's if Rolex kids, did this. Z's kids. I don't know if Rolex did this on purpose, but the puzzle pieces and the, the colors, to me, almost looks like that they were doing like a charity foundation for, mm. for awareness. Um, so, I don't mm. know. I don't know if it's a kid foundation or what, what it is, but it's, no. I don't think this is going to be a piece that you're going to see that's going to sell. It, it would have been actually pretty cool, in my opinion, if maybe the day and the date kind of resembled the, what's going on on the, on the dial. Maybe different colors to match the dial, alternating, something different like fonts that. Or maybe, different fonts or maybe. Different That would have been kind of cool. But you know what they do? They'll probably release a limited amount. Yeah, for sure. Special, and then that's why people want to have it. Agreed. Because they're not going to just float the market with this piece, you know? They're just okay. going to make for the collectors you know a few pieces and and of course that's going to drive the price up so that along with that they they, they also came out with three new stone dials they came out with go mm -hmm. to the to the rolex website real quick there no it's a right tab right after 
right there. There you go. So they came out with this green oh, wow. aventurine. They mm -hmm. came out with this orange carnelian, and they came out with the turquoise that used to be on the yellow oh, gold and God. platinum. On the 36? Yes, in 36. What do you, which one's your favorite there of the 36s? Oh, man. I like the turquoise and the green. The turquoise and the green? To make it on a 40 will be a killer. That's what I'm saying. They have to come out with these killer stone dials on 40 because right now the only stone dial I think that they make in 40 or have made a 40 is uh beautiful what is watch. It? onyx right i I'm, i don't know if there's any others but for sure there's the onyx do they make a a mother of pearl or have they ever made a mother of pearl 40 or 41 i don't think so right 41 no that i know no no on a 40 on no. a 40 either so we rarely have stone dials or any unique special dials on 40 or 41 we have the so. ice and kill the eyes and kill, that's, that's correct. Right. Very true. Eyes and kill. Yeah. The eyes and kill. I forgot about that one. We got the eyes and kill dial. And then you have the onyx. And the onyx dial. Do you want to see louder colors on the watches? I personally, I like colors. that green dial is amazing. What can, does it can, have? You, can you open it up, the, the picture of the green dial, so we can look at that? It's beautiful. Wow. So it's actually a textured stone dial mm -hmm. and they the, has like almost this grain finish to it it's when beautiful. you're looking at the pictures of all mm -hmm. up close i think if they do come out with this watch in a 40 just to make it look a little bit more masculine to take off some of the diamond markers on the dial just to maybe keep it with uh i would like it without the bezel and just that dial. yeah i like the bezel i like the bezel because it is flashy dial but maybe how they do the baguette markers that it's just uh the six to nine that they have some diamonds on it for me but, I, I i love it you I don't think it they just like change that? anything. No. I uh, consider a and little bit. I'll rock it like that, 36. I, I'm oh, me too. Yeah. I have a small wrist. I, can wear I have that, a bigger no wrist, but I think I'm going to start rocking 36s just because he's I'm cooled down. Let's just, go to the next. Let's go on the next one. What else do we have? The balloon dial. They also came out with this, so they just continue. Is, is that the nickname, the balloon dial? That's what they called it on this video here. Hey, so it, it, it makes it sense. Dangerous? So go, go it's ahead. It's an oyster perpetual. But is it yellow gold or no? Go back. Go back a little bit there. 57 seconds, 58 seconds. You know the different color dials with the Tiffany, the green, mm -hmm. coral. Right there. It's this model. So if you look at it there, they kind of did all... Pause it. Go back. Thank you. So they did kind of like all the OP colors mm -hmm. in the dial in smaller That's circles. what I didn't realize too. It's a culmination it, of all the different dial colors. Do you think this is going to be a production OP or do you think this is going to be a very limited run as well? Just like the Jigsaw? I would think so. Very limited. At least like a limited... It does. It looks like a special edition, maybe made for a year. You think it's yeah. going to be uh, like the 80s, probably one or two pieces, or you're going to see them like a Submariner for just a year? Not like, like Submariner. Like I think they, and I don't think it's going to be one or two pieces. I think they're going to make yeah. a few hundreds, you know? No, you're going to see them. I'm saying one or two per AD is what I'm yeah. saying. Uh, you're going to see a very, or it's going to be a, for a year, they're going to be pumping them out, and it's going to be. It literally, are. dude, it really depends on if people like the watch. Because it, what happens is like there, there be there, there tends to have become a surplus with these watches if people don't like them. That, and then you just like see them everywhere. But, but when people like them, it ones? seems like they're they're just impossible to get. Yeah. That's that's true. You know? But that's kind of what every Rolex. It's uh, that's how at least people call and they're like it's impossible to get anything from the ads. And we're getting yeah. calls left and right that people are trying to sell us stuff. So it's we're still coming out of a very interesting time in our industry. Let's a see. time that I've never seen in my 13 years, bro. <laughs> let's see. Let's see what uh, what Rolex is. Tell me What's about the next it. tab? <laughs> what do you guys think about this? This was probably my favorite, favorite, favorite release. The Same, Titanium bro. Yacht Master. Can't wait to put it on. It's got to be extremely light yeah. and comfortable. So nah, I was watching amazing, one bro. of the videos, and supposedly in the same dimensions, if they would have made it in steel, it would have been about 30% heavier. Is so it a 40 or 42? 42. 42 millimeter. No way. So they actually came out mm -hmm. with this concept, I believe, in 2021. Ben Ansley, he's a French sailor. He was wearing a 42 millimeter titanium yacht master on a strap. Really? Yeah, you haven't seen that? No. No. Uh, can you actually open up a new tab? I'm sorry, I didn't have you open that one up. Type in Ben Ansley. B E N A I N. Yeah, there you go. British sailor. I'm sorry, he's a British sailor. And then type in yacht master. And click it right there. Monochrome watches. We can give some credit. So they actually came out with this in 2021. And it was a real prototype. Look at it right there on this like, Kevlar strap. Huh. It's actually super cool. 
So on, on the on the on the strap on the strap because the other forty two millimeter Yamasters all come on the straps. On the, like the oyster, oyster flex. flex. Correct. So if you notice here, this is something that I noticed when I was looking at the watch. If you notice here, the edges on the watch on this one here, it still has an a, an edge, right? You see on the lug. You're talking about on the inside how. It's oh, on the on the lug right here on this yeah, edge, yeah, yeah, it yeah. has it just like a Rolex. Now, if we go to just like the Yamasters, I'm sorry. Now go to to the next tab. Right there. So if you watch this video now where they release this watch, it has chamfered. Yep, yep, yep. So almost like the what, like vintage Submariners, right? That they have the chamfered lugs. Yeah. Instead of having it there with a the sharp know. edge. Nah, it's this watch is gonna be a killer, I think. Go to do we have another video of it? It's another the second tab? titanium watch that Rolex has ever made that I am aware of. You see how how pronounced the the finish is? Yeah, it's you beautiful. can really see yeah, the, the grain lines, grain lines in, it. in it. And it's titanium very, very is super nice. strong metal. I mean, it's like titanium. it's going to be durable. I think people are going to really like that. So watch. if you look at it, look at the color, how gray it is with that matte mm -hmm. dial. I think it's killer. Go ahead yeah. and play that. I love it. And I there's like the certain watch. photos I've seen so where pause like pause it real quick there. I guess maybe it's just a reflection from the crystal, but there's like a bluish hue purple, in some yeah. spots. Have you seen that? So I like don't know it. if it was a photo. Maybe the guy had like a purple case or something oh, on the phone. Oh, maybe. Because every other video I've seen of people dealing with it there, it's it just, just looks flat, matte titanium. Black. Yeah. But what they did notice and what I have heard people say is that the rings around the hour markers are in titanium as well. Also. Yes. That makes sense. So another cool thing also about this watch is... There's a very I can't I forgot the name right now, but there's a very unique name for that black dial because it's a matte dial, mm -hmm. but almost has grayish tones to it as well. You're talking so, about the color. The color of the dial. I, I I don't know. So go ahead and continue. Well, that's a that was. I think that's GMT a, yellow. I really like that release. Amazing. I really like that release. It reminds me. Of, uh, reminds me of the vintage pieces. Go, uh, go back to the. Now we just, screen. now we just, just need go, to, uh, go to the next picture. Now we just need no, 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 no. I'm sorry. The next picture on there. There you go. Thank you. They also came out with the two tone. I'm not a big fan of that two tone. So for me, the yellow, the yellow on the Jubilee. Dan, can you go back? And, and if they would have made it like the classic version with that like root beer looking dial in yellow gold, I think it would have just been amazing. I, I'm hoping yeah. that they do come out with this with like a. Imagine like a Surdy dial again. Because the first that time that I've seen a gold GMT was with that champagne dial with the rubies in it. And I was right. like, wow, this right, is right. insane. So that was a, with a factory, you know, just little markers and stuff. Yeah. Which I don't think Rolex has done that on the GMTs in not even... In a while, they haven't done something like that. Not it, even it the Cerus. Yeah, that was, those were the last ones. Yeah. That was like 2019. So what do you guys... See, see if we have any questions about this. Did anybody say anything about the, the GMTs or anything so far? Remember, like what you're saying here is a, maybe like a 30 second delay, so you're never gonna get an answer like right away after you okay. see it. So um, I think the questions are better. You're better off like. Wait till the questions to the end. Yeah, at the end. Okay, all right. We'll wait till the end. So let's continue then. Here, this, this 1908. I honestly say that this is my favorite release. You too? Yeah. Yeah, so I've, I've read a couple of people talking about it online, and a lot of people are saying that this is very cool for Molex. How do you feel it's, about it? It's amazing. It's amazing. It looks like a paddock. <laughs> it, it looks does. like a paddock? Like a Calatrava. Like a Calatrava. What do you, what do you see? What do you, some features there that cause your eye, or what do, you, what do you think about this watch? Would you wear that? I would wear that. I think it's a dressy watch, it. I'm watching the the bezel. It's fluted. That's the fluted smooth bezel. Dude, it's crazy. Yeah, fluted, half fluted, half domed. Like that, when I was reading on the website that it was, it was like, I don't even know how to explain that. Like a two different style bezel. I just couldn't understand how they would even do that. Like, but it looks it. seamless and like effortless when you look at the photos. Just Rolex is really good at. What yeah, you right. Rolex touches yeah. anything. Speaking Can about Rolex is good. Yeah. Speaking about Rolex being really good at what they do. Since this is, I, I want to see this in person. I have no doubt in my mind that they like they did this perfectly. Yeah. But going back to that yacht master, you said that that was the second watch that you know that they did in titanium. Yeah. I saw the deep sea challenge in person, and it almost looked like 
a fake watch for the reason being that the edges on it were a little bit sharper than Rolex's like stainless edges. The screws, how they were machined, wasn't as perfect. And just the texture, overall texture of that titanium, I don't know. It didn't feel like as nice as a stainless watch. So I wonder how that finish on was on that watch. Just that sparked something on my mind now that we were talking about. So you're saying you're saying you're you're gonna wonder how the two different watches look side by side as far as if Rolex has gotten better with working with titanium? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we're gonna see. I wanna see that. I wanna see that. But let's go back to this nineteen oh eight. So if you didn't know, Rolex mm. actually trademarked their brand in nineteen oh eight and that's why they named it that. I did not know that. But this <laughs> watch is that? styled after yeah, I like to read all these weird facts. <laughs> This watch is actually styled after a 1931 OP, so mm. I feel, at least I hope, that this this step in the direction of them coming out with this new line is not going to be like the Cellini's or the Cellini's, how people pronounce them. Because uh, I never, have you ever sold a Cellini? Have I ever sold one? Yes, one. One? <laughs> and and how, how many watches do you think? In 10 years. In 10 years. You Wait, sold so this is watch. not considered a Cellini? No, so this continues the Cellini line. This is a 1908. <laughs> okay. It's a whole new watch. Oh, perfect. Yeah, every, everybody thought it was going to be a new Cellini. I thought but... it was a new Cellini. I just assume round watch, watches that look like this are Cellinis. Yeah, no. me too. <laughs> me too, but nah. It's a, I don't know. It's going to be cool. And they did a new hand on it, very thin watch. Let's go on to, let's go on to the next one. The Sky Dweller. I think this is everybody's favorite release. This is, I, every time people, I've had... Not yes. a fan of the Sky Dweller, but I like I like that blue dial. You Wait, do? so I have a question for you. Why? I know you've kind of addressed this before, but I wanted to ask you directly. Why don't you like Sky It's Dwellers? not that I don't like. It's not one of the watches that I prefer to wear. Why? Because it's kind of like, for me, it's kind of like in the middle. It's a dressy, sporty watch. I don't know. I like the Prezi better. He calls classic. it a Bentley. I call it's it a, a Bentley. Bentley. So for me, the Sky Dweller is impressive, bro, because it's an annual calendar. It's an annual calendar. And Rolex is kind of always... Except for some some vintage pieces, like they've always kind of done things kind of very simple, and a lot of people don't realize that this is an annual calendar. It's a complicated movement. It's a complicated movement. Yeah, yeah. but also a little heavy in gold. Yeah, it is. That would have been a cool watch in titanium. That would. Yeah. But, but I like that combination. Which one? Rose and uh, the blue. For Do me, you, the rose and the blue is amazing. I am not sure how I feel about the, the green. Same blue. Uh, that we've seen before, liking. or it's going to be like a different shade of blue. As what? It, it's like the blues that we've seen before with Rolex, for example, like the Samariner. It blue. looks no, lighter. It looks, it, looks it looks a little lighter here, doesn't it? It looks almost like a teal, right? Like a greenish. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Some people say it reminds them of the. I don't know why they released what is, that. Was that white gold? A white gold on Oyster Flex. That's going to be. I white think black. Be a, well, a, some people there you go. Like look. Gold. Now it's really confused. Is it sporty? Is it dressy? Right. On the Oyster Flex. <laughs> I don't even know why I like that. What like? That's like, cool for the boat if it had a sports car. with not, the green dial. I don't know how fresh. I feel about that one. This, I I think that's gonna blow up. I think that watch is gonna be. Let's see if I'm wrong, but I think that's gonna be double retail when it comes out. Like to be one of the first ones, I think you're gonna be in the 30s easily, 30, 35 grand. Well, how much was the blue steel when it first came out? Well, when it first came out, there weren't there wasn't this type of market, but the blue steels are. St Still in the mid to high 20s. Yeah. So how much is a green going to be? A oh, green date just is close to 20. Yeah, that looks funky. It it really depends on demand, to be honest. Now, the one of the last things before you move it there, before you go to that tab, it's... I don't know if you guys know this, but this year was the 70th anniversary of the Samaritan. Right? Did we finally get a, uh, a lapis style or an onyx style? No, so Fuck. I was saying that they were going to release in a, in a reel. I said that they were going to release like a platinum Submariner or something like mm. that with a light blue. That would have been a little weird, different. Um, I don't know. But they did do something. And I haven't seen anybody talk about this in the video except uh, Adrian from, what's his name? Barker. Adrian Barker. Go to his, his video right there. It's a, the last tab that you were about to open. Right there. So they changed the green in the Kermit again, or the Sermon, as people call it, the Ceramic Kermit. Hit play, and then pause it real quick there. If you notice, supposedly the green is a, sh a brighter shade of green, and it's closer to that 50th anniversary. So it's a, not a big change, but it's like a, a lighter, lighter green. It's a lighter green. And we've seen this with the Pepsis, with the Ceramic Pepsis. When they first came out, I was like, wait, 
is this what fake or what's up here? Because mm. we've seen, remember before they started talking about it, there's three different shades of Pepsi, mm. red and blues. You've seen that, right? Yeah. Yeah, so now, do you think this, this is just, they changed the production or they changed the color on purpose? What do you think this is? Um, it's probably not an accident. They probably wanted a way to distinguish maybe the 70, 70th anniversary of the Samariner. But my personal opinion, I don't really like the 41 millimeter sub. Me neither. I actually I'm like it in two tone. Fine. I like it in two tone. But for me, the 40 is perfect. Like, I don't know why it's. 41. What I was hoping they were going to do before they did the 41 was like the 40, but how they had the previous case with the thinner lugs at some mm. point, large in size. You like do the thinner they, lugs? Yeah, I do like the thinner <laughs> lugs. You were telling me that about the Zenith Daytona the other That's day. That's what I like. That's exactly yeah. why I like that. It's It looks a little bit more, not as big and clunky. I think the 40 was perfect. Mm. If anything, they should have stayed 40, just gone maybe the wider bricks and thinner lugs and change it up a little bit. But Rolex knows what they do and they feed us a little at a time like Apple pretty much. They they do it. They do they they do well. They, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Yeah. And for being a lot of people don't know this too. There are a they are a non profit organization. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. That's, like Nike. I didn't know Nike was either. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. People making killer amounts of money, having wait lists, that's it. Alright guys, you have any questions? Let me see. Okay. Dan? Questions. Uh, can we put the questions on the screen so we can see them? Yeah. That's a great question. <laughs> we'll go ahead and pop these out. Pop out chat. Here we go. Well, they're going to see their questions too. Because they're going to see my screen, I think. Okay. Let me see. Does the Sky Dweller count for leap years? No. So the Sky Dweller has two, I guess you would say, defects. It can't count February because February doesn't have 30 or 31 days. And it is not a continuum perpetual calendar. It's an a, annual calendar. It's an annual calendar watch. So for it to count leap years, it has to be a continuum perpetual calendar, such as the AP Royal Oaks. What else? The new Explorer 40 is a beautiful piece. I don't know how I felt about that. I've. How do you feel about the Explorer Forty? Did we look at that? No, we didn't look at it. I didn't can we like. Can we can we look at it? Yeah. Can you go? Somebody asked about that. Just type in. Just go back to the Rolex website and you the go second back tab. to the bottom. Like you were saying, yeah. Right there, Explorer. Scroll down. You know, I read somebody in the comments saying. What would be killer is a titanium Look at that, look at that, two. look at that. Are they re-releasing the vintage one? Because I want that one instead. Yeah. I don't know. I don't like it. I like the vintage one. I, Me I too. Don't, <laughs> I don't really care for... With the rivets. The rivet bracelet, yeah. With the gilt dial. I mean, that shit's beautiful. Sorry. Just wearing. It kind of... You know mm. what has a similar vibe to that? The OP. The OP is all stainless with gold mm. markers on it. But... I don't know. I didn't really mention talking about that. I, di I didn't like it. I know there's uh, there are people who really like it. I sh I'd rather own a date just. So the question is, what do we think about it, right? I don't really care for it. Yeah, I, I, I'm indifferent as well. How do you feel about that? It's okay. It's okay? <laughs> Not a fan. Not a fan of that? More questions. More questions. Assos, let me see. Some... Um, maybe right now, right now, maybe if it does increase, well, it can go one of two ways. The Panda is still a very hot watch and it's not as produced as other models and people still having a hard time getting them at the ADs. So if it increases as a seven year run, maybe like when it gets into vintage territory, it's like, oh, that watch was only made for seven years. But the thing is that Rolex is producing so many watches right now that it's not like back in the day. So I don't know. It's hard to really like get a grasp on like where the prices are going to go because before covid for example uh, the 116520 
I used to buy those watches for less than ten thousand dollars, and then all of a sudden they were twenty five thousand dollars, and Rolex's prices have always gone up over the years, slowly, steadily, and predictably, but never something like so drastic like that. And now that they're readjusting, they're still artificially high. So how do we? How do you really know where the price is going to go? It could go either either way. You don't really know. It really all depends on people, like whether they keep buying up watches or not. It's a, it's a very strange. Like Daytona always tend to keep the price, man. The whole, yeah. The whole value, you know. But, but so I think it's one of the models more desirable. Dude, since I've been in business, and when, you know, when you first started, like yeah, I never paid re- retail for any Rolexes. No, was, even was, Daytonas was, were discounted. Was, well, I, I, there used to be a lot of a lot of dealers that would get watches. 20, 30, 40 percent. No? Correct. On their on gold their, watches on their were always 30 off, bro. 30 off, yeah. That's crazy. Didn't matter which model. It's 30 off? Well, 30 off. It, well, dealer cost is 37 off across the board, 37 and a half, maybe 40 now. But, you know, but, dealers would have to buy, authorized dealers would have to buy whatever Rolex gave them. Like a big quantity of watches. So, yeah. yeah to so, meet their quotas. And, and, right? that's, a, and that's, a, yeah, that's how used to dealers communicate one with each other. It was like, Oh, I give you this Rolex two two eight or whatever two one eight two three eight, uh, twenty off, mm-hmm. fifteen off retail. Yeah. So before, like I used to know, mostly all the retail prices because, because that's how you would. To, we, that's how we used to communicate the prices. That's how we used to work and price the watches. Yeah. They didn't give you a price; they give you a percentage off. Mm-hmm. off oh, the so retail. they would tell you ten off, fifteen so off, yeah. thirty off. Yeah. Remember, I, we used to use uh, Swiss Luxury to get the retail all prices. the time. All the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in shout out to years. Swiss Luxury. They gave us a uh, help back in the yeah, days. Yeah, back the in the days. We don't use that anymore because no. I don't go by the retail. You know, I barely go to see a re. Well, now I'm starting to watch the retail prices on the watches, but well, some watches are becoming <laughs> par yeah. with retail, well, even retail, a little on less. Their, on their yeah, correct. Yeah, I think that the watches. That question. Are... You have a question, sir? Yeah, um, there's a couple actually. Are the prices for the Tiffany Dow 41 millimeter OP coming down? Uh, I think they're maintaining. I, I haven't checked the last time, but I think they're like in the mid twenties still. Mid twenties, twenty five thousand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe a they little higher. high all the way to fifty when the Tiffany Patek right. came out. And how do you feel? Would you, as an enthusiast, ever pay that much for that Tiffany OP? If I was selling it to somebody, I would. But well, for myself, no, no. As an enthusiast, to to no. buy, that, I think I personally wouldn't. But it's good that the rest of the world isn't like me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, yeah. It's, it's, How like, do you, yeah, it's a like, personal preference. Yeah. To me, I understand paying 2 3 X retail for a Panda because it's a Daytona. It has its heritage and all that. But an OP? I ah. mean, listen, listen, they may never make that again. And we may look back in 10 years and be like, that OP was so nice. We should have bought it back then. Now you can't get them. I mean, you don't know. About. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's how you don't know. Yeah. Country. Once it gets discontinued, then the price goes up. Yeah. Go ahead. Will these lives be a regular thing? If you guys want them to be and you guys support us, yes, as you guys see, it takes a lot of work yeah. and we're still having troubles with them. But if you guys enjoy these lives, I will continue to bring you lives and give you guys more topics. So Just give us the feedback. Give us give us positive feedback. Let us know. Give us if you guys don't like anything, let us know. Send us an email, send us a message. Let us know what you guys think about these lives and what topics you guys want to see. Will CRM be stocking any new brands? Yes. Yes. So if you guys notice, I am actually wearing a Omega right now. It's it's yeah, and we're going to start it's taking a lot of watches Omega and consignments Omega. and a lot of new brands that we yeah. haven't sold before that we're willing to, you know, uh, put it at the store for a 5% fee. So if you have any watch that you want to sell that maybe before we didn't buy it, you know, now we could try to help you sell it for a 5% fee. Awesome. <clears throat> Why doesn't Rolex put a green sapphire on a Kermit? That would be a good idea. That would be cool. Let's talk. I didn't talk about the Milgauss. Yeah, somebody's asking about that too. Right? The Milgauss. The Milgauss. How did I forget that? The Milgauss is a very, very special watch to me. You know why? Because he's a higher seller. Why is the Milgauss very special to me? Oh, it's the first video you made. It's the, the first, first video, video I made you know. on YouTube mm. on 2013, 10 yeah. years ago. Yeah. 10 Our years first. Ago. It should be your. YouTube it should video. be a very special watch for you too, bro. Why is that? Because it was the first watch you ever bought. Ah, that's right. The first watch that <laughs> I ever bought from, uh, well, in general. In general? It was from you, from Matthew. 
There you go. So the Mogas is a very Matt, special he's piece. He's been around my life for the past 10 years. And it's been a joy. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, just ask. type in 116400 GV. 6400? GV, yeah. Milgauss. How do you feel about the Milgauss? Were you ever a fan? I, I liked it. <clears throat> yeah, Milgauss. I like the vintage Milgausses more. <laughs> I'm gonna, so I'm going to get into that now. I like the Milgauss. Why? Because the Milgauss was the underdog. It was, it was bigger than an OP at the time when they came out. It didn't have, so it didn't have a date, but it was bigger than the OP, like a date just, but cheaper. So you can have this funky, cool, date just looking watch with this orange lightning bolt hand. Even if you got a white dial, which is like the most boring one, it had an orange lightning bolt hand. And I think that that was so much character and so much fun mm. from Rolex that I liked it. It was especially of at the price point it were because you, you pick them up for 5500 bucks, six grand. And the date just was costing you maybe two thousand dollars more than that mm -hmm. back then. I don't think we have sold many of them. <clears throat> we don't. They're, they're the underdog. They're they're barely, you know. Not. I don't consider it very desirable. I wouldn't that say they were desirable. Explorer, I'd probably put them in the same bracket. That and the Explorer too. <clears throat> yeah. T O O. Not T W O. Explorer two. Yeah. <laughs> T O O. Oh, like the one we were just looking at that somebody asked about the new Explorer. The Explorer two. No, sells better than the Explorer 1. The Explorer 2 sells better than the 1. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's why I was saying T-O-O -O uh -huh. instead of T-W-O. All right, let's go back to the question. Let's see. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Which, newer, which newer Rolex model is the best to invest in right now in the 20 to 40K price range? The one that makes you the happiest. Invest in mm -hmm. your happiness. <laughs> um, I mean, buy a Submariner. It's like safe. That's, that's Submariner is safe. Everybody that wants Submariners, Submariners sell the best. Hulks, yeah, yeah. Hulks. Just um, like a classic sub. Black sub. You can't go wrong. Do like a 90 sub, man. Don't even yeah. go that expensive between 20 and 40. Why are you copying your dad's beer? He did it best. <laughs> bring him it, bring it back the beer. Oh, you, of course, you focused Love. on that comment. If you guys <laughs> knew me back then, I actually grew out my beer first long. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. When no. I had my beer long, so and back. then you grew yours my after. Beer. I had my beer 10 years ago when I started with Raisa. I know. I had a lung 10 I, years ago. I know, and that's when I had mine longer. 10 years ago, you were in diapers. I wasn't in diapers. <laughs> <laughs> I was. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. That's pretty impressive. You Come can grow on. a beer like that from yeah. diapers to now. Yeah, 10, 10, years. 10 years. Yeah. Crazy. It's a grown man now, man. Shout out to Charlie, man. Doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Bacheron, why didn't you guys have any in stock? Um, show any on the, on the channel. Well, you know, we haven't. Had, we haven't bought the brand because you know we our customers haven't asked you know haven't you know it's a watch that doesn't have much demand at the store compared to the other brands but now it's becoming a lot popular and we're willing to take some on consignment of course yeah remember our while we do enjoy watches this is more of a business than a personal collection so what we stock and what we we trade here is what we get the most calls on so that's why you do see a lot of the sports model rolexes datejust um patek aquanauts nautiluses there is certain pieces that carlos buys because he likes the watch and he's like oh i'll sell it too and there's certain pieces like that but most of them is just a business standpoint and Yes, Vatron is a very, very nice brand. They make very high-end watches. But why it doesn't make sense from our standpoint to invest $50,000 in, for example, Vatron, when you can buy five Submariners, right? And sell them quicker. Yeah. So and that's, that's just the only reason. But on consignment now, why not? Yeah. Basically, what you're saying is if you had clients that bought Vatrons, you would buy more. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was sense. my main bread and butter. Then, yeah, yeah. I would only sell Vatron now. Yeah. Somebody's asking about the meteorite dial, how it's discontinued. Yeah, right here. Do you talk about the discontinued? <laughs> yeah, I, every time I hear that, it just breaks my heart. <laughs> go, go, elaborate on that, it please. It breaks my heart because, you know, I purchased one when it was really high at 150000 and then we just sold it for 70000 and then three days after, it gets discontinued. So and I now look, it's back up again. Now <laughs> it's back up again, so. To what? How much? Probably a hundred and something. <laughs> Once they Yay. use that magical word, discontinue, people go crazy. So now everybody's calling. I got a call this morning. Do you have the John Mayer? How much? I'm yeah, willing to pay 85. Yeah. Um, now 85 because it got discontinued. That's the price before it got discontinued. Now they're selling for $105,000. Yeah. 
you in, know? in two days. Somebody in told me they days. posted one in the chat for 130, and they're like, this guy's crazy, but he still did it. Well, well I didn't see it, but if you want it now, I, yeah. then you got to <laughs> yeah, I remember when the Rose 5980s, people were asking 80, 90, 100 for them. I was like, nobody's going to buy that. Little did I know. <laughs> it went all over to 300, so. Yeah. Crazy. Next. There you go. All right, somebody asked about this brand I haven't I never heard of. Do you guys sell quantum watches? Here? Never heard of quantum. Do you how many sugars how many sugars you guys like in your colada? We like three cucharaditas. One coffee with seven sugar. Three spoons of sugar. Three three flavors. What else? Alright, that's uh, I think that's pretty much That's it. everybody it? Let's go. That's it. Wrap it up. <laughs> Wrap it Thank up. you guys for joining our live and watching us discuss the new Rolex releases. Thank you, Matthew, for being a yeah, part of it. Not a Thank problem. You, Anytime. Anytime, Anytime that. boys. So it was awesome to do some. So if uh, you guys want us to do more lives, message us right here. Yeah, give us some ideas. Anything you want us to review or talk about it. Just don't be afraid and, and just give her a feedback. And if you guys have anything interesting to talk about, talk about your collection, talk about how, your journey here of something related to watches or Cuban link change or anything. Send us an email, let us know. You know, the actors were ready today. You know, the production team, you know, had a little bit of trouble, <laughs> but they'll get it, you know, they'll get it. They're working hard on it. So That's it. Actors are on point, everything's on point. Thank you Thank guys. Thank you guys. See you Stay again tuned. next Thursday, same time. Uh.